Okay, I can see a few people have joined, so we might get started just to keep time. So hello everyone, thanks again for joining today's um, latest HashiCorp snapshot titled Connecting Apps Across the Cloud, which will be presented by Senior Solutions Engineer, Dave Wright. Um, so today, today Dave is going to show you how we deploy console to connect multiple cloud platforms. Uh, he's got some slides and, and a great demo that he'll take you through in a moment. But first of all, I just want to run through some, some housekeeping. Uh, just want to let you know that this session is being recorded and uh, a recording will be made available within the next day or two. Um, we'll send out an email with the link. Um, and today's demo will last about 15 minutes. And to keep to the 15 minute time frame, we won't have time to answer questions as we go. Um, but please do submit your questions to the, the, the chat tab down there at the bottom of your screen. And we'll get to those answers at the end of the session. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Over to you, Dave. Thanks, Pete. So in today's session, uh, we're going to talk about connecting clouds and some of those challenges. One of the things we're going to do is look at the challenges of the modern connectivity and why modern networking is actually challenging, how it differentiates from the past. We'll look at how to actually overcome that with using with the use of console. We'll look at a specific feature, a couple of features that really help enable that multi-cloud component. And then we'll take a look at a demo that I've put together that actually kind of really walks through that whole process and just highlight some of that, that those steps. So if we take a look at why modern networking is a challenge, I think it's a good place to start just to kind of set a baseline. And what we're talking about is if we look back in the past, traditional networking was very much under your control. You had a very defined realm that you were the master of. You had a, a, a point between internal and external that you could define very clear security barriers. Uh, you could allow which traffic would go in, which traffic was going out. And then within that sphere of control, you could separate uh, VLANs. You could create routing rules to actually uh, steer traffic you knew who was coming in, you could create remote access, you could join uh, over dedicated links between uh, two existing data centers. Now, when you take that and put add into the mix environments that you don't have any control over. So as you start consuming cloud platforms, as you start consuming as a service mechanisms, as you look at containers or serverless, in those environments, you don't have any of those control mechanisms. And to add to that complexity, you then have things such as they're only short lived, they're um, how do I register them? Uh, lots of these are being driven by application teams. Uh, how do I interlink those services and how do I fit those into my, uh, my existing environment? And the way that we do it and the way that we approach that is with console. And console has three key elements that really clearly address how to solve those challenges. The first of those is our service registry. And so console acts as a single source of truth that actually allows you to register those services. And because it uses a mechanism underneath, which is DNS, that mechanism allows you to then either forward that on to existing uh, DNS infrastructure or to actually be slaved from existing uh, DNS. And so now you have a mechanism to talk between the new and the old world. And once you've started to register those services and know where they are, you can then actually start to allocate where those services should be connected to and allow other resources to access them. The next step in that journey is then also the service discovery. So once you have the registration, now you need to be able to tie, how do I automatically discover these new or short-lived services? And this is where Console Connect and the ability for an agent to be injected into a, a Kubernetes cluster, for example, and automatically register with our cluster and feedback that service. And so now you have a single source of truth, you have a mechanism to be able to register, and then leveraging the service mesh, you now have a mechanism that ties all these things together. So the service mesh allows for those services that were registered to be able to be, or discovered, to be able to be able to communicate each, with each other over a mutual TLS. And so now you have a mechanism that can tie different elements together in the new and the old world, and automatically register them and connect those apps together. So what we're fundamentally talking about is making sure 
that console acts as this single control plane. And in that component within a data center, it can then actually work in some of the traditional space that standalone elements would. So as console as a cluster, it can allow you to actually do loads of load balancing. You can actually start to do some proxying components. So you can proxy in between different networks. It has a firewall or security component with our intentions, which allows for specific rules as to what services can be connected. You can bring services in. So you can bring in services such as um, uh, API calls into those, uh, into your application, or you can interact with uh, external sources like RDS, for example, and bring services out of the existing mesh. And so all of these components go together to create this single control plane. Now, once you have a single control plane, what you can then do is link those elements together to create uh, an overarching uh, control plane. So there you have uh, using our basic federation, so our WAN join capability, which allows both of those clusters to be joined together. And now those, those two clusters could share resources. And within that structure, you then have geo specific, specifically. So that allows you to actually say, I know where this resource lives. I know how to divide those resources up. The other key element that we'll be looking at is also the mesh gateway. And so the, the mesh gateway is a mechanism that allows for traffic to be routed out. It uses the SNN headers to actually then steer to another gateway component and uses mutual TLS uh, between those two points to actually allow for that, the applications to communicate. So in that multi data center component, we have our WAN federation that allows uh, the resources to know each other and our mesh gateway allow, allows them to connect together. So if we take a look at what our application or our demo is going to do, and later on, uh, there is a, a link to this repo if you want to actually download it and, and try this again. Or there is also a, a learn um, mechanism that sets up the console connect. So you could use either one of those mechanisms to play and discover this yourself. But fundamentally what we're doing is we're using this console connect element here to inject. So this is run on a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster. When it stands up, we inject the connect uh, agent into it and that auto registers uh, with console. We then also use the service upstream mechanism to define where our services are talk. So our vault mechanism here is local and our MariaDB is actually specifically only in GCP. So even though we would deploy our application across different multi, uh, different uh, data centers, the, the actual database and, and records will only live in one particular uh, cloud provider. Now this also opens up some interesting challenges around using uh, data sovereignty and how do you protect, protect that. And so we leverage Vault to actually encrypt that local data set so that only data within that cloud can be read uh, from the data database on the back end, even though the applications are say, sharing the same database and the same schema. So if we just take a quick quick look through that session and how and, and what will actually happen, our application will actually make a call to its local uh, proxy component point. From that lo local point, it will then make a sidecar call into our mesh gateway. And that establishes our, our TCP and TLS session. Our local gateway then looks up where it needs to go, talks to the, the, the mesh gateway that is corresponding to that. And then our corresponding gateway on the other data center then makes the routing decision based on, on that incoming header. It passes it to that local sidecar proxy in a reverse of what we've just done and then start some mutual session between those two proxies. Then we make a check to make sure that there is a security role. So this is our intention and that firewalling element that I talked about. And this then checks to see whether we can actually make that local connection. If we can't, it will send a reset. If we can, it will set a send off a local connection to the local uh, host port on the service and establish that data connection. And now our applications can talk. So if we actually look at this in practical terms, what we're talking about is being able to make fundamentally DNS requests between these components. So if we just take a look here, you can see what we're doing is making a DNS request across our different systems. And here, MariaDB responds for our GCP. However, if we look in AWS,
we can't find it. However, what we can do, and this is where that geospecificity comes in, I'm having trouble with my words, um, we can see that console, that our, our transit app, which isn't up yet, is, can be specific to a particular area. So if we just take a look at uh, deploying IP, So while that's deploying, let's have a look at that in a more visual way. So you can see here that in our GCP, we don't have our application deployed yet. If we look in AWS, it's not there yet. AWS in Azure, if we go back to GCP, now you can see our, our application is automatically registered and is, and is available. If we then look in Azure, now our application has been deployed and the same in AWS and you can see clearly that in those other data centers, there is no database. There is only that database here in the MariaDB component. So if we just take a look at uh, where, if we just take a look at our Azure, so Azure usually spins up reasonably quickly. So let's just change our context into Azure. If we can get our service to have a look. So here's our transit app service address. Let's see if our app is up. Right, so our app is up. Let's take a look at some records. So I pre-populated some of these records just for time, but you can see here that we can see the Azure records, but we can't see anything for any of the other cloud providers. And if we look at our database view, you can see that we do actually have records for them and they are encrypted using the vault stream. So why don't we have a look at what's going to happen in, in one of the other clouds and hopefully uh, if we do the GKE because that's usually reasonably fast. And then we do our get service. So here is our code app again. So let's click that app. And all of these are available in the readme when you actually run through it. So you can copy this quite easily. Now, if we look at our records in GCP, you can see we can actually see the GCP record, whereas in our, in our Azure, we couldn't, you can see it, but you can see the Azure one. And here we have localization. And again, this is all through the use of Vault and integrating those two things. So if we go back to our our, our console and we actually do that DNS request now. So if we look at our service here, you can see that our service will respond with, uh, with a, a, an AWS specific component. Now if we change this to GCP, that will respond with the GCP address. And you can see that that difference between those response. So let's just to round this out, let's see if we can get uh, AWS to come up now. This is, their, their DNS is usually a little bit slower, but hopefully it will be working. Yeah. And now you can see the records. And so now you have all three with individual records that are only be that can only be read with that local vault instance. These mechanisms are connected using console. So you can see that the database only is living in GCP and all of those records are stored in one single, single place. And yet we have our application deployed across multiple environments and multiple different cloud providers. These clouds are also uh, across different regions. So I have one in the US, I have one here in Australia and I have one in Asia. So the whole mechanism is using those fundamental elements to put together. It uses DNS and our, uh, and our service definition. So Vault is defined as a local service. Uh, the MariaDB is defined as a remote service specific to GCP. And with that, our apps can now actually find and connect to those different services. You can also see that our console servers are built in our three node cluster here and Vault in our three node cluster there for resilience. And our mesh gateways as, uh, have been deployed as, as the two instances have been federated across each other. 
So with that, that's basically uh, heading back into uh, a thank you. So what I'd like to do is thank everybody for coming. This is that this repo is is basically that full uh, demo. So in it there are three scripts. All you have to do is follow uh, the readme. One, the first script is a deploy. The second script is an app migration. So you can actually do a variation of this where you deploy the application first of all, and then move the other two apps to stand up. Uh, and then there is a, a complete destroy. So it will actually do and, and destroy all of the those. All of this is automated using Terraform and all of it is run within uh, the three managed cloud uh, Kubernetes components. There is a cost associated with those when they stand up. Also go into learn, look up for mesh gateways and console connect and for WAN federation. There are examples of all of those uh, and how to deploy all of those with the use cases and run throughs on, uh, on the learn site. And obviously please stay tuned and sign up for the next uh, snapshot series. With that, back over to you Pete. Thanks Dave, thanks for that. Nice demo, very good work. Now I'm just looking to see if we've got any questions. I think I can see one in the Q and A tab for you, Dave. Um, can console complement AWS private link, or are they mutually exclusive? So with private, so under the console will need an underlying connectivity mechanism, whether that's routed out through the internet or over private links. So yes, it will complement a private link if you have set up the routing input and and permissions correctly to allow it through. It uses, um, there are four defined ports now uh, with as of 1.8 that we consolidated down to make it easier for security concerns to actually allow those connectivity to happen. Great. And um, just looking to see if there's any others. Folks, if you do have any questions, please pop them into the chat while I close this out. Um, alternatively, as Dave mentioned, you, you can contact him a myriad of ways through that through those contact details you can see on your screen there. Um, I think I've just seen another question pop in. Okay. Um, Dave, could you get into a, a bit of detail about how K8's transit app get deployed to all three DCs? Yeah. So. <laughs> So um, the script that runs uh, effectively just does a app deploy. So it's a, it's a compiled Python app that is uh, uses the standard Kubernetes uh, K, uh, K, uh, Kubernetes, Kube, Kube control apply to deploy that file as an application. All I've done is wrap a bash script around it that allows for all three of those to run through and done some contextual switching between each of the Kubernetes clusters, because obviously you need to do the kube, kube control for each individual cluster set. Uh, I just have to context switch between those. Uh, and so that script just made it easier and faster for demonstration purposes to be able to do that. Great. Okay. Just looking, I can't see any other questions in queue. So we might wrap it up if everyone's good with that. Yep. Okay. Like I said, you can contact Dave on, the, on those details there. Um, so that brings us to the end of the session, folks. Um, we hope you found it useful. And as I mentioned at the top of the call, um, this session was recorded. Um, the recording will be made, made available on our website soon. And you'll also receive an email with a link to that recording. And if you like what you heard today about Count Console, um, you can visit our Learn site at learn.hashicorp.com. Again, that link is showing on the screen there. Um, so do take and have a look at that. And also don't forget to register to our next snapshot, which is on Nomad, uh, first class federation with Nomad, which will be held on the 6th of October. And you can register at that link down there, hashicorp.com forward slash events, forward slash series, forward slash snapshots. And like I said, you can look at those URLs when we send you the recording, if you don't take it down now. So that brings us to the end. Thanks again for joining and big thank you, Dave, for your presentation and demo. Very nice work. And um, yeah, hope to see you all on the next one. Bye for now.